the national perspective the budget is full of hope and lot of good schemes have been uh, inducted this time like pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana housing scheme and har ghar jal but if you come to our state's perspective we are disappointed nothing which is mentioned in the ap reorg act has been put into the budget there is no mention of uh, andhra pradesh state sir i would like to talk, uh, talk about our concerns the first thing is special category status for our state special category status is not something which we are demanding sir i would like to clear the air about this uh, special category state on march 2 2014 in the cabinet meet the then prime minister passed or a cabinet note was generated saying that like special category status be given to andhra pradesh and it should be implemented immediately so i have the cabinet note also here sir it is disappointing that in the last 5 years nothing substantial has been done and nothing has been mentioned about special category status also sir and there were few members who spoke even in the house that 14th finance commission objected to special category status but it is not a fact as mr abhijit sen who is a member of the finance commission he clearly wrote a letter saying that finance commission has got nothing to do with a special category status and it is only executive decision and i have the letter also here which says that finance commission has got nothing to do with special category status and it's we can it can be it's only executive decision with a stroke of a pen we can accord special category status sir i'll tell you the reason also for this our state was split against our wishes we didn't want our state to be split because we don't have a capital nothing was there but we were promised lot of things act was enacted like ap reorganization act which promised lot of things but if you see today nothing no, no word has been kept what word has been given in the floor of the house it has not been fulfilled also to give the magnitude of the situation in andhra pradesh i would like to quote again sir i have spoken about this earlier also i just want to bring to the notice of the house again the debt of our state from independence for the residual state of andhra pradesh was 90000 crores and in this 5 years our debt is now it's like huge 260000 crores and we are having a interest burden of 20000 crores per year if this is the situation in a couple of years or after 3 years it will be difficult for us even to pay our salary sir let alone development of the state and the 14th finance commission projected that the revenue deficit will be 22000 crores between 2015 to 2020 and it was promised that the state will be given enough support it was even mentioned in the prime minister's address that the state will be adequately supported and but if you see sir the all the words given in the floor of the house what has been done nothing has been done sir they are not keeping up any promises we want support to our state we we been unjustly divided we expect support from the government it is right time to act also because the 20 22000 revenue deficit which was expected in the last 5 years is close to almost 63000 crores like how do you expect a new state without a capital without proper infrastructure to generate such amount and that is our question sir and a lot of uh, industrial incentives have also been promised and one or two incentives have been announced for our state but uh, to give a real fact if you to uh, see what actually came to our state even in spite of this uh, incentives nothing substantial has come in if you see the report of uh, dipp department of industrial uh, policy and uh, promotion nothing more than 4000 5000 crores investment has come in for the past 5 years apart from one year where we got 9000 crores so if you check all the iems filed we will get the stark reality where nothing substantial is happening we are not getting proper employment we have a lot of youth 
they are all highly disgruntled because no, we can't see a, a proper future where our youth is going to get jobs. So special category status, as was promised, is our demand. We want special category status to be implemented, sir. We are not asking something which is new. What you have promised, it's time to keep up your word. That is what we are demanding. And if you get into this uh, AP Reorganization Act, which was passed in the floor of this house, a lot has been promised. Like for us, a steel plant in Kadapa had been promised. No, there is no mention in the budget. There is no fund allocation for that. We have been uh, given uh, for backward districts like special development package, but even the funds allotted have been, not been released for the past two years. And even if you see in the Prime Minister's speech, it, it was told that a development package in the lines of Koraput, Golangir, Kala, and the package will be given. But there is nothing, there is no mention also. And even a package like Bundalkan, a special package like the Bundalkal package will be given. But so far there is no mention at all. The AP Reorganization Act clearly states in a Section 94, para 1, it says the central government shall take appropriate fiscal measures, including offering of tax incentives to the successor states to promote industrialization and economic growth in both the states. We would like to know what you have given in the past five years and what, what is the result of that, sir. We would like the minister to specifically talk about that. There is no mention of Dugraj Patnam port or the Vaizak Chennai industrial corridor. Sir, even the metro rail project is going at a snail place. Nothing has started, and let alone uh, the Vishaka, Patnam, Tirupati airports, they were promised to be international airports. You forget the developing the airports, sir. The flights now are getting cancelled. We requested the minister not to cancel the flights because, the, because of our state should be treated in a special way. Sir, one more thing. The Polovarum project is like lifeline for our state. It's very important. I would like to bring to the notice of the Honorable Minister that Polovarum project is a national project which was supposed to be built by the central government. But as a part of the India government's decision was that the state government would construct it. But one thing we were not able to understand, sir, Polovarum project cannot be built in one year. It takes like six, seven years, and now it's going to take two or two and a half years more to construct it. The central government said that we will only stick to the initial proposed amount and we will not increase the value of the polo project. This is not fair because it is an irrigation project, the foundations may vary and the cost is bound to change, there are escalations. So we request that the total cost of a polo project be borne by the central government as it was promised. And sir, one more issue I would like to minister to clear air about this. The 15th Finance Commission, as part of devolution of funds to the states, is taking the 2011 population census. Earlier it was 1971 population census, but if you take the 2011 population census, states like Andhra Pradesh, which effectively implemented family planning control, will be grossly affected because our population has been controlled very well. There have been like a lot of effective measures taken by the government. If you see, there have been a lot of slogans like we to ours too and all these effective family things. But if we are not going to be treated, we, we, this is not going to be, I mean, uh, this is not going to be considered according to 1971. And if our population is down and funds are going to be down, then I think this low, the, I mean, uh, the population control measures is not really going to uh, matter. We wish that uh, justice be done in this and proper measures are taken so that states which effectively implemented population measures are not at a disadvantage and there is one more scheme, Hargar Jal. Hargar Jal, we would like to know the modalities because our government is planning to do like uh, give piped water to all, every household in the state within two years, but not in five years as it was uh, mentioned by the Honorable Minister. So it's going to, we wish the government comes out with modalities and helps us soon. And there's one more issue I would like to bring, it's regarding GST. Sir, there are two important Please. points. We have enough time. We no, have enough time, sir. No, no. No. So, Please I would like to uh, bring to your notice that, see, there was a, the Honorable Minister spoke about a elephant story where if you don't pay proper taxes, your uh,
fields will get trampled. Here there is a case, sir, like those people who are doing government contracts who have started before the GST was announced. And after the GST, a lot of governments are not paying the GST to the contractors. A lot of governments are not paying the GST. Yes. I would like to give me two minutes, sir. No, already you consumed. Ten minutes. You we already have, uh, in the BAC we have discussed, we have enough time for this. No. <laughs> I, I, I'm just keeping a track of my time. I need two more minutes. Your allotted time already you consumed. I have two more minutes, sir. Yeah, please. 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 Within one minute. And one minute. The governments are not paying the GST to the people doing the government contracts, and but the GST department is putting penalties and filing cases on them. So we'd like the government to devise a mechanism where if the governments don't pay the GST to the business community, it should be, I mean, it should be uh, prevented from uh, putting penalties and things like that. And one more thing, sir, I would like to say that uh, if Make in India has to be successful, the banking system has to be put in place. So, due to the paucity of time, I think I will close it with this here. Thank you, sir. Thank you.